this one is, is I, I, I finally left my first wife and, and her dream house in Palmyra, Pennsylvania, which I basically thought was pretty sterile, but I couldn't afford much more than to move into a railroad apartment in Anvil, Pennsylvania. A railroad apartment is one where you have to travel through each room to get to the other. So I had to go through the kids' room to get the bathroom. They had to go through my room to get the kitchen. You get the picture. And it was doubly a railroad apartment because a half block from my house was the freight train track that came through at 745 every night and rattled the windows. So that became the punctuation of my life for the, the six years I lived in this place. It was really, in my life, my time in the ashes. It was, was the bulk of my 40s. It was a, a demotion to a graduate student department, even though I was a, a tenured associate professor at Elizabethtown College. Um, and, and it was a productive time for me because I had every other weekend by myself in central Pennsylvania, which is coupled up. And most people have couple or family time on weekends. So I basically just worked. Ended up getting promoted to full professor at a fairly young age because I had to deal with my loneliness by just working, by escaping to international conferences, by going to visit friends, by doing what I could to do anything but return to that railroad apartment. But it was a, a delight when my children would be there, a couple nights a week, alternate weekends, because my best times were, I'm sure, with them. The first summer, we did a, a movie within a movie called, well, the movie within the movie is called To Kiss the Sky, which was about Amelia Earhart. They did all the research on this. And the whole package was, of course, called To Kiss the Sky, because oh. it was made by kids themselves. My daughter, I took on a hot air balloon ride. My son's science project, Scott, I remember one where he was studying dust bunnies under the microscope and had a video of the cockroach eye view of my apartment. So that was kind of fun too. Um, but there was a dark cloud overhead. And I mean that literally because my upstairs neighbor, an older woman who was at like night maid at Hershey Met or something, had a daughter who lived with her off and on. And unfortunately, I'm sure I was responsible for some of the off ones because Cindy was 300 pounds retarded and schizophrenic and she really didn't like to take her medication very much so i'd often hear her stomping upstairs swearing screaming ranting and sometimes just sobbing which just broke my heart she was wonderful and she'd come by when i'd be hanging out outside with the kids she loved the kids we went for walks together she was just just endearing as hell and they loved her and one Christmas, she said, can I, can I bring some presents for the kids? And I said, oh, Jesus, of course, you know. And a few days before Christmas, she started bringing the boxes down, one after another, after another, until my kitchen, my little railroad apartment kitchen, was full of the $1,000 or so she spent at Kmart on all sorts of kitschy, weird stuff. And I finally just said, Cindy, this is really just inappropriate. And I got her mom down and I told the kids, look, you can each get one present, but we got to take the other stuff upstairs. It broke my heart. My kids were just totally fucking weirded out by this, of course. But it also turned Cindy somewhat darker. And I started to get the phone calls of, you fucking bastard. Why'd you make me pregnant on the back staircase? Why won't you fucking talk to me? You, you, well, you get the idea, pardon the obscenity. That was hers. Um, there was no back staircase, of course, and this went on for three and a half years, so pregnancies don't last that long. And I wasn't apparently the first victim of this delusion, but it went on and on. I, one night I had to call the police and she ended up being led away in handcuffs. And then there was the afternoon when she broke my window with her hand left a bloody paw print on my front door and finally had to be wrestled onto a gurney by the EMT and three and four, three or four cops. She was gone for a couple months and came back, made her promises. And then I was a stomping and the, it was the same over and over again. 
But the worst part was, you know, I'm a professor, you know, I'm a successful human being. I'm doing well. I, I love my kids. My students think I'm, I'm a god. God knows why, but, and, and, but if I lived in this place another year, I would have been living there longer than anywhere else I'd lived in my life. And that was just not tolerable. Well, a friend of mine convinced me that I could actually do a withdrawal from my, my retirement funds, which I'd been contributing to since I was like a 26 year old PhD. So that was fine. And that summer was, a God, I went to Athens for a faculty workshop and did a, a cruise of the Greek islands. It just, just opened my mind totally for this. I wanted to do a, a, a class that I, I take students to, to, to Greece for half a semester. I, I got a sabbatical approved for that fall. So I was ready to go. I was going to be free. And I got a, a home loan approved. I, I thought about moving to Baltimore. A friend of mine had given me a tour of the nightlife there. I had a cousin teaching at James Madison who was living in Washington. And I, but I couldn't go. I had to be close to my kids. I got a place 25 minutes away from them with a two bedrooms downstairs, a study upstairs, and a back porch that was trellised and reminded me of Greece. It was wonderful. And it was my mountain of joy, like where Dante met his Beatrice. It was just, it was spacious, it was open. I was looking forward to my sabbatical. We painted the pink bathrooms multiple colors. And then a week later, after I moved in over Labor Day weekend, my brother calls from Ohio and says, turn on your fucking TV. A jet just crashed into one of the twin towers. And I turned on my TV and saw the second one crash. And you knew it was not an accident. And everything changed. Well, 20 years later, everything has changed again. But I'm happy to be living in central Pennsylvania. I'm still here. And my God, we have a new president being inaugurated tomorrow. <laughs>